Welcome to chapter two. We're going to show you how we built some great control into our downcut stream so we could stop further channel deepening and begin the repair process. The goal is to gradually return watercourses to working naturally after people have created problems, usually by their blocking flow with roads or ditches, and often by too much livestock grazing. Bill Zedike has traveled throughout the West, a lot of places, and he's summarized it into three major factors that are almost always the cause of stream incision and degradation in a landscape. And those are roads, irrigation ditches, and cattle trailing. I want to have that water sink down, go sideways or laterally. I want it to hydrate the fields for cows. I want it to stick in the ground long term so that we're growing grass better in the late season when grass is scarce. And that's kind of on the profit end of things. What's the most common stream bed restoration that you execute? So in, in this circumstance, we're on an alluvial fan. We're in channels that do not have perennial water flow. They only have water flow during either a rain event or shortly thereafter, maybe for a short period of, year, of the year. <clears throat> and frequently we'll use either grade control structures, a one rock dam or a log mat, something like that, which stabilizes the bed of the stream and makes sure that some sediment and water soaks in next to it. It, it controls the grade or the gradient of the, of the stream bed. One rock dams or ORDs, as the name suggests, are made by placing a single low layer of rocks across the channel and then repeating, so a sort of rock mat is formed. The purpose of a one rock dam is to maintain the natural grade or slope of the water channel. When the grade has been degraded, one rock dams can help to gradually restore it to its previous natural condition. The edges of the structure tie into the bank on both sides at the width of the high water, while the center of the structure is lower. This keeps water directed to the channel center and reduces the possibility of flanking around the edges. These are designed for relatively narrow streams and the idea is to provide a little friction, not a sudden change. The ORD may have a row of lower rock, called the splash apron, dug in first on the lower end. Then the rock mat is continued upstream. This reduces the tendency to form a scour pool and the creation of an unwanted vertical drop. Once built, gravel and road base is poured above, below, and onto the one rock dam. This seals and locks the structure, but is porous so water can seep through. After rains, sediment will also infiltrate the cracks and plant roots can take hold. The entire system functions as a whole, and after enough time and rain, will gradually disappear and all your hard work becomes invisible. What are some things you notice about it? Not here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a sign of success or failure? Success. Yeah, totally. If you can't find it anymore, it means that it did its job really well. <laughs> If, after time, further stream bed elevation is needed, a second one rock dam may be built on top of the first one. The second ORD is displaced upstream about halfway on the first dam and will again begin slowing water, trapping sediment and growing vegetation. Here, the white circles simulate how the next layer of rocks on the ORD would be placed. Got a question? So it seems like in a moderately high to very high flow event, the water could bypass the splash apron and scour out the area beyond it. They could have taken these rocks that they used for their splash apron, they're long this way, and they could have rotated them 90 degrees to get a longer splash apron. Yeah. And that's a, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. If, if you can make your splash apron longer, that's definitely a safer way to build a structure. Below the culvert, a single layer of rock ties into an existing secure large rock to help anchor and strengthen the new structure. Across the channel, the rocks also key into the bank. This is important to help prevent water from eroding the bank. Here you can also see the relationship between the drop from the culvert to the excavated scour pool. 
The One Rock Dam will help the pool to collect sediment. It will also help prevent any upcutting from downstream that could undermine the culvert. This system will cause water to slow, pool, drop sediment, send water downward into the soil and sideways into the bank as it maintains the natural slope of the stream. In the next sequence, imagine yourself standing on the road and looking downstream. Directly below you is the drop pool from the culvert. At the top of the frame, you can see the completed one rock dam, as well as the smaller material placed upstream and in the crevices of the dam itself. Note the care used to fit the rocks at the edges, left and right, upstream and downstream. The water, when it crosses the grade control, will come off perpendicular to the orientation of the grade control. So this one, the water is going to go down, it's going to go straight. If that grade control were built at an angle, the water would hit it and turn. Here it all is, coming together after significant precipitation. The One Rock Dam is now creating a riffle, which is a feature of many undisturbed watercourses. So instead of fast, powerful water cutting down into the stream and its banks, water is now slowed and less destructive. The ORD is also helping drive water sideways into the banks where it can penetrate and promote vegetation growth. Plant roots are the real hero in this process. They anchor the soil and guide water deeper. Of course, their photosynthesis produces food and removes carbon from the air. This is a great improvement over bare earth. Here we see the existing boulders we use to anchor the structure and help to keep it in place. You'll want to take advantage of natural features like these whenever possible. Next, notice how the rocks that we placed on the banks are above the high water flow and protecting the soil from washing away. And finally, everywhere you look on the banks and under the water, grass has grown. All in all, a good two days work. That concludes chapter two. We talked about the common causes of erosion on ranches, some structures that can be used to repair erosion damage and return natural slope after erosion occurs, the importance of protecting edges to prevent water flanking, and the critical role vegetation plays in natural systems. Please see the references posted below this video. Chapter 3 will explain a bit about another vertical control or drop structure, the Zuni Bowl. Chapter 3 will autoplay, or you can bail out now and watch it or any of the other chapters on your own schedule.